hey guys welcome back to my channel so i wanted to do something new before i get into um sharing my review on the show um i wanted to give a shout out to my new subscribers now youtube only shows um new subscribers in the last 28 days so i'm unable to see anything beyond that so if you subscribe to my channel over 28 days ago i do not see your name i can't see your name so i can't give you a shout out and i am so sorry but i thought that um i would give some shout outs just to acknowledge you guys because i really appreciate you deeming my channel worthy of your subscription so and please forgive me ahead of time <laughs> if i if i chop up your name i am so sorry i apologize in advance so i want to start off with um talia's world and then we have the kevin 421 baha bulil halangwan hope i'm pronouncing that right um samantha lopez and sharon lee also if you're page or if your account is set up um as private like where you don't want your name listed um as a subscriber or anyone's channel i'm i'm not able to see your name as well um and then i want to give a shout out to those who have been commenting on my videos i really enjoy communicating with you guys and seeing your your thoughts on what i'm saying and as well as um your thoughts on the shows so we have jennifer d uh king mark tabby is t a and then a capital b so i don't know if it's but it's a space in between so i don't think it's tab tabby Deneen grant m sanders or sandres um, Kimber B, Nakazi Smith, Claudine St. Louis, Jelson Santos, Halezi Fai Delamini, Tini Regal, and Jess Jania. There was also um, a new subscriber, but the name is in a totally different language, so I have absolutely no idea how do you begin to read it pronounce it whatever but i see you welcome and thank you for subscribing all right guys so let's get into married at first sight all right um let me start with greg and diana and i want to start with them because their scenes surprisingly was actually very pleasant um not that they really had a lot of drama like their drama wasn't um explosive as what we've been seeing from the other couples um you know we just been seeing you know diana give attitude things like that but this episode i really enjoy watching them now i know a lot of us myself included have been you know saying that diana's attitude um body language everything towards greg has changed since coming back from the honeymoon and it seemed like right after she um saw his house that all of a sudden she's just this totally different person um and i still believe that but i i also am open to the idea that because you know what different things attract us to people and it's not to say that uh, maybe she didn't necessarily believe all of this and then when she got there to his house it was like oh, okay so he's really panning out to be what he said he was going to be i don't know i'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt you guys but um I do think is is because of the house, you know. Um, and let's face it, we are attracted to what we're attracted to. Yeah, you know, seeing the guy that's on his own, independent, and he's living larger than we are, it 
it's an attractive um, attribute to who they are. Okay. Now, so on to their scenes. Okay, can we can we all just say and can we all just agree that we love Sandy? Okay, Sandy makes me want to get a dog. I love her. She loves Greg. And I found it hilarious when the scene where um, they had all their friends over and the guys went off into a separate room. Honey, Sandy went right along with Greg. She did not. She left her mama in there with the girls and went in there with Greg and the guys. And I thought it was the cutest thing because people say all the time. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this saying, but babies and like little kids and animals, mainly dogs and cats, they can sense a person's aura a person's energy and so a lot of times people say you know if your pet or your kid acts very very standoffish towards a person then sometimes that means this person isn't good or there's something going on with this person because animals and kids their spirits are so innocent and like they can just pick up on certain energy i don't know guys but that's what i've always heard and i've i've seen it i've seen it like when my kids were little especially my daughter when she was really little she wouldn't there was a lot of people she would not go to okay and some people she went to with no problem i don't know this is when she was like a baby but anyway guys i'm totally off subject but let's get back to Sandy. So Sandy follows Greg in the room and she is just so comfortable and just chilling. And I th I want to go back to when um Greg, you know, when when they came back home and he first met Sandy. Greg to me is pulling out all stops. He is doing whatever it takes, you know, whatever Deanna has asked for or complained about or voiced or whatever he conformed to it she didn't like a lot of compliments he stopped it and you know another thing i noticed about him is not once has he been disrespectful or um had an attitude because you know most not most but some guys would have probably went off like what the hell is wrong with you you don't want compliments and da -da -da -da. you know and just kind of we have an attitude you know give it back to her the attitude she's been given to him but he's been very mellow he has been patient he's been kind and you know going above and beyond trying to make her comfortable and appease to her and um then with the whole dog you know he at first i was like oh maybe he's not into dogs because you know the shedding and the cleaning or whatever but he you know he put forth an effort to get to know her dog and some people are very you know protective and very into their pets like they are like some people are with their children so the fact that he put forth an effort you know i i um i give him kudos for that so anyway on to their scene together um i thought it was really sweet that diana you know acknowledged remembered and acknowledged his birthday and um you know got him the birthday cookie and you know when they sat down and they talked um diana opened up a lot more about herself which wasn't surprising to me because even though she have said that she has not been in a relationship for 10 years not once did i think she was not having sex like I, i've always thought okay she wasn't just by herself for 10 years she just hasn't had a serious relationship um but she was more open to him more touchy-feely more affectionate and um you know more more at ease and just more nice she you know she did say she felt more comfortable with him um greg you know he 
he uh teases a little bit like okay you see how sandy likes you know the compliments and hopefully you'll like them and you know so he he throws in a little bit of a of, of funny and a little bit of comedy in it um but he's dead serious because <laughs> he's like um uh, okay does that mean you know something's gonna go down tonight um but i did enjoy their private time where it was just the two of them talking of course listen sandy okay is it me or was sandy cock blocking sandy's like look y'all together i'm gonna be all right here all up in the mix <laughs> <laughs> it's just so cute i i i like their little family i really do i um i like them together i think they look good together they make a a, a nice looking couple um and i just i don't know i like them together i really enjoyed this episode with them just sitting on the couch holding hands you know i like that subtleness to it it's like they're not all over each other um groping and 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 just join at the hip and freaking and feeling all over each other they're taking their time they they're doing little subtle things you know holding hands rubbing hands and things like that gave the kiss i like it i'm feeling it i'm 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 team diana and greg you know like i've said before hopefully all of this is coming from a genuine place um for both of them but mainly from her because she just like totally just like flipped the script you know she went from ice cold to she's warm like there was no easing it to it she just went from one day she's rolling eyes acting like he repulsed her to she kissing him and rubbing him and rubbing the palm of his hand and all of that good stuff so yeah i like them this episode i like them together i like their little family and i truly hope that they make it i do okay so let's move on to uh, keith and iris all right now in the last review i was saying how i think that um i think iris is slowly but surely getting on keith's nerves um because she comes off as this overbearing you know what do they call it chatty is it chatty patty or chatty kathy she's just sometimes it's like just chill just like stop <laughs> stop talking it just just relax and go with the flow she can be overbearing and um i think it's wearing on him a little bit now mind you they are still getting to know each other so he may not be used to this and it may, it, it'll take some getting used to but you can just tell it's kind of like ugh. um the whole situation with oh let's talk about the situation with his grandmother okay so of course it was a very somber moment um you know very somber very sad and i will say that i did like how iris approached the situation meaning when he talked about going to visit his grandmother um yes they're married okay but iris still asked like are you okay if i go is it okay if i go because let's face it guys yes they're married but they're strangers they're still strangers they're still getting to know each other and this is a very private time and and like i said somber and you know so you don't know how the family may have felt they may have felt like okay yeah you guys are married y'all on the show but we're not comfortable yet with her being in our our situation right now and for real we still don't know because when we saw iris she was not in there with the family she was just walking outside so 
who knows we don't know maybe the family was like hey can you like kind of step away or it was either that or they didn't want their family being filmed during that time which is totally understandable totally understandable you know i mean i wouldn't want cameras in there either because the show is about keith and iris not about our family and how we're dealing with um you know a tragedy at this moment so um i'm kind of glad they didn't show that you know give them their privacy to deal with the grandmother's illness the best way um they can and and um you know just you know just give them their space so i i like that whole setup i commend her for asking is it okay you know instead of just like i'm his wife and i'm gonna be there you know like we're we're package deal around we're coming together whether you guys like it or not and just kind of invading <laughs> the family space so yeah now to the gathering of friends so the gathering of friends everyone comes over and all right now before we get into the juice situation is it me or it seemed like off the bat iris wasn't really feeling this gathering okay um because when her and her girlfriend were in the kitchen preparing you know the little fruit trays or whatever which they did not wash the blueberries or the raspberries i must say which okay anyway i digress but yeah i, I had to point that out because that just that just did something to me but when she was in the kitchen talking to her girlfriend and she was talking about the gathering and Iris' whole demeanor, I mean, she was just like, you know, about people being in her space and everyone's coming over and I just don't know how. And I'm like, no, not Miss Bubbly, you know, happy-go-lucky Iris. Like, they, the people haven't even gotten there yet and you're already talking about people being up in your space. Okay, so I don't know if, the situation with the juice was really about the juice or was it that she already wasn't feeling this gathering she already wasn't feeling a lot of his friends coming over because I'm, I'm i'm sure she didn't have a problem her friends being there so i mean i was just kind of wondering if one had to do with the other okay um oh and i also wanted to point out iris mom you know talking to Keith and asking him how everything was going and mentioning that she reached out to his mother um you know to check on her and see how she was doing I really like that I really like that um I thought that was very very sweet of her but yeah so moving back to the party okay so his friends go in the refrigerator, get juice, whatever, and Iris is just about to, like, pull out her eyelashes, okay? Afterwards, they, her and Keith are sitting on the couch, and um, they're talking about it, and she just, you know, is like, I don't appreciate it, I don't like it, and Keith is looking like, what's the problem? You know, my friends, they do that when they you know will come over to my place and then iris is like you know she comes with this whole where well, this is our place and you know there's no different than if they were, went in our room or our bathroom was going through our stuff and of course he's like they that's not the same thing it's not that serious calm down now my take on it is i see both sides okay i see both sides i am married and um you know my husband and i have hosted gatherings you know with family and everything and well i mean it's kind of different like when we're with family like i don't really have an issue with family you know going in the refrigerator or whatever and even with close friends it's like if we're having something now i would want you to ask you know like hey we ran out of this and this do you have you know do you have any refrigerator or do you have any more and then i'll say all right in the refrigerator you can go get it but now we don't know if keith friends asked him now they're not going to go to iris they're going to ask him because that's who they know so we don't know or at least i don't recall seeing 
um, any of his friends going to him and saying, hey, do you have more juice? Is it a refrigerator? Can I get it? Or, hey, do you have more juice? And then he just told them, hey, you can go get it out of the refrigerator. We don't know. Okay, because they do a lot of editing. Now, Keith did not mention it. He didn't mention, well, they, they, they did ask, and I told him it was okay. We didn't see any of that. So we're going to assume they didn't ask, and they just went in there. Okay. So I can see both sides, right? It's not just your place, Keith. It is you and your wife's place. So they do have to respect that it is her place as well okay and guys let's face it i mean people forget you know these, these men men are not as well i won't say not as particular because some men are but guys really don't really think about stuff like that i mean that's their boy they're used to going to his refrigerator i don't think any there was i don't think anyone meant to be disrespectful or meant to dismiss her or any any of that at all they just wasn't thinking and they felt like it's a party everybody's walking around okay let me just go in you know what i mean it, it, it was an honest i believe just an honest oversight no one was thinking that's what they're used to doing and that was that where the problem comes in is iris she's so like she could have addressed it she could have approached it differently all she, to me all she had to say was look especially when keith said well you know they're my friends that's what they're used to doing when they come to my house they just go in there she could have very well just been like you know what i i get it those are your boys that's what i do but at the same time you don't live by yourself anymore we're married now and all i ask is that they not do that plain and simple but you know what you know what how how another way you guys can solve that problem and this is for you guys listening <laughs> okay if you ever are with someone you gotta have a little gathering put my thing is this i make sure i rather have way more than enough stuff out that way people are not invading your space so get a big cooler you either get a big cooler and put a bunch of ice in there put drinks in there i'm talking about even the big gallons put them in there that way if they need more juice they need sodas waters whatever it's right there no one has to go in your refrigerator they go to the cooler or you get a cooler full of ice have the drinks out on the counter or have a designated table for the drinks put more than enough put drinks underneath the table have like your tablecloth and have drinks underneath the table and say hey here are the drinks if you need more they're underneath it's underneath the, the the um the tablecloth the ice is right there and there you go so you know it's it, you live and you learn okay if you don't want people going to your refrigerator make sure you have enough stuff that's out that way all they gotta do is go to the table and get it that's the way to solve it um but I think with Iris, Iris ha Iris kind of comes off as, <sighs> I don't want to say it. Because I think her and Keith are the same age. But she comes off as older than him. And I don't want to say talk down to him. But she talks to him like he's, almost like he's a child. Like, this is how I feel like she's right and in, in, in what he does and how he feels and how he see it is wrong in a sense you know like my friends would never do that and i would never do that to my friends well okay what are you saying because him and his friends do that that's what they are used to doing so when you come and say well my friends and family would never do that i would never do that you're saying that to say what so those who those people who do that what about them what are you saying so she comes off like that and and i just feel like you could have skipped all of that and just said hey you know what i appreciate if they don't do that it makes me uncomfortable and leave it at that so and keith you know keith all this time has been very quiet very soft-spoken laid back okay this is a second no the third time i've seen him still quiet still laid back 
but there's like no smile on his face and he is giving her the stare down and he did it um when they were on the boat and when he I think when he was talking about getting in the water and she was like, no, you no, you better not. You can't do that. And he was like, you know, stop acting like my mama. He was smiling and joking. But then, and then there, there was a little point there where he was kind of like, Ugh, like, girl, just stop. Um, then with the whole condom situation. And now with this and you guys saw it when he was laying on that couch and she was just going on and on and on and on. And when he explained to her, OK, well, that's what they're used to doing. You know, I don't I didn't have a problem with it at my place. And she just kept going on and on. He was so, man, he was giving her the stare down. He was looking at her like, look, all right. So you could tell, I don't know if Keith has a temper, but I can see Keith at some point walking out, like, like, like not leaving her, but just walking out going to his parents house for a couple of days or his boy's house or just totally shutting down where he's not even talking to her for real like because iris is she is just overbearing to me it's like she it's like oh uh, she's just too much she's too much and on top of that you know <laughs> you ain't having sex which i want to touch on when they were sitting with um jamie and who else was it jamie pastor kyle um i think matt no pastor kyle and uh the other jamie the male jamie this is during unfiltered and they were asking him about um you know intimacy with iris and i don't know i mean i know that's i know that's the big topic of their relationship and you know but it was something about the host, Jamie, when she's asking those questions. It was, I don't know, it just seemed a little invasive. Like, you can just ask, have y'all been intimate yet? Have you consummated the marriage yet? But she was, like, wanting details. And you could tell Keith was uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable for him. Now, he was like, you know, we've, we've held hands, we've kissed, you know, we've touched. To me, it should have just been left at that. You know, I mean, we could kind of put two and two together and know that they're doing everything but actual intercourse but anyway when she asked him and i don't know if you guys watch unfiltered but this is this is doing the unfiltered part when she was asking him okay well do you see you know forever with her and keith was like um you know i don't know i'm still you know filling things out and the host jamie was like what you know you're saying all these good things but you don't know if y'all and i don't know that 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 was kind of uh, i don't know if he was just saying it to throw things off but that was kind of telltale right there but anyway guys so that is my take on keith and iris um i think she need to calm down a bit because just like he's used to his life being a certain way as a single man she's used to her life being a way as a single woman so she needs to understand that he had a life before you it may not be the way you lived you know and that's where the compromise come in but don't don't wag your finger at him is basically what i'm saying because that's what i feel like she does don't wag your finger at him and talk to talk to him like why are you doing this you shouldn't do that and it sounds like you're 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 turning your nose up but anyway guys let's let's get off of that uh which train wreck do i want to talk about next um let's do jamie and liz um okay so like everyone else their well their family their parents came to visit and there was something that was revealed okay that uh was kind of shocking so as they're talking about i think who jamie's mom or stepmom was talking asking um liz about work and you could tell liz was uncomfortable which i found odd because i'm like 
why are you so why is she so because usually she's just an open book but she was very uncomfortable kind of fidgety with the whole job conversation and then it was revealed Liz doesn't even work okay I know these people fill out applications I know you know her dad of course probably I, I'm I'm assuming they call these people employers and or 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 verify some type of way if they actually have a job. You know, I, I'm hoping they didn't just take these people word for it. But then again, I don't know how they would verify unless you're looking at pay stubs. I don't know, you guys. I'm just trying to figure out how Matt and Liz are on this show and don't have jobs. Like we already talked about Matt in one of my previous reviews where i'm like i know he lied on his application obviously so now we got liz liz has already lied about wanting children and now she's lied about having a job like what did they have her down as um what was it executive marketing or something for her dad company and here we are they're talking about oh let's see what job title we're going to give her uh, uh, excuse me what you don't even work so I think leading up to Jamie and Liz argument I think it started there um because that guys listen what I know for me one thing I can't I can't deal with a liar I cannot stand a liar and I think that kind of put jamie in a in a, in a certain head space at that moment um because you could tell things shifted at that point and later on when they're talking just the two of them and he goes into the whole job conversation and uh well no take that back it started with her asking him about his parents now i don't know what transpired before that because again you guys you know they do the whole the, you know the editing but he was pissed okay when she started asking about his parents divorce now my take on that is this apparently they've had a conversation before regarding his parents and divorce and he has expressed to her how he felt about it happening um and how he felt about talking about it okay so liz was very aware that he did not like talking about it so what possessed her to bring it up and not only bring it up but bring it up on camera who knows and that's why i say i don't know if like like i said before liz and jamie they do this tit for tat stuff now jamie no liz act like she was very like i said very uncomfortable and like she was a little pissed that they kept asking her about her job so i don't know if she called herself on some get back and that was her way by bringing up his parents divorce but she knew he didn't like it and yet she brought it up so of course he gets pissed and he leaves okay so well you know he's talking about the whole um her working for her dad and he was like you know you really wasn't working that's not what you told me and nepotism and he going to that whole spill and you know then he's coming with the flowers and trying because that's what they always do they always get into it and then what i say guys they get into it they have sex and then they're good wash rinse repeat it is the same thing with them and so but this time it didn't work this time they it went to another level and liz was she was in her feelings okay and she let it be known that she was in her feelings so the nepotism thing i don't even think that is really a big deal to jamie i think the fact is here you have it good you you have an opportunity that a lot of people would kill for 
you have a you know a family business that you can work for and you're not even working for them like your your dad literally is taking care of you literally and so it makes one wonder why would you not even work for your dad like what is jamie what uh, Liz, what is she 30 is she i think she's 30 but so yeah so her dad has literally i guess basically given her an allowance he pays her bills and then he gives her an allowance because she was not working and then my question is did she ever work where was she working before that so then it's like what is she doing with all her time and i don't know if you guys noticed and i meant to mention this um my last review i believe liz is on drugs and when i say drugs i mean it could be prescription pills I want you guys to watch her now last episode was very very obvious and i'm so mad i didn't mention it but the next time you and i don't know if you guys if you want to go back and re-watch this episode or even the previous episode or wait till next week watch her eyes liz has this there's there are times where her eyes get very very glossy or glassy and she looks high like she's ready to fall asleep like they'll be in mid sentence and she looks very drowsy um her eyes begin to cross a little just pay attention so i don't know if liz is on prescription meds i don't know what's going on with her but a lot of things seem to be a lot of the dots seem to be connecting okay you 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 don't work probably never worked okay dad has been taking care of you which explains why at the wedding when he comes with her uh what was it her car registration because i was like okay if she's working like why would you be paying for that it explains it because she's not working he is taking care of everything so jamie is probably feeling like damn you don't have any work ethics no work history you know you won't even work for your own father and is it because she's incompetent like the father feel like she can't handle anything he don't want her actually working for his business so he rather just take care of her is it because she's on drugs or she's she's a substance abuser and he doesn't i mean there is more to it than she's just this spoiled brat that daddy takes care of it's more to it you guys i'm convinced it is more to it and I honestly believe that Liz is on some type of medication, some type of drugs, whether it is prescribed or it's street. But just just watch her. Just watch her eyes. Watch her, how she talks, her whole mannerisms, guys. Sometimes Liz act like she is completely out of it. And last week's episode was... Uh, really showed it okay so anyway back onto their 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 argument so they're arguing and like i, I was saying i don't think jamie Nessus like he brought up nepotism i don't really think he has a problem with that per se i mean he could be but i think it has more so to do with the fact that you're a grown woman and you've never worked like you're not even working for your family's business so and to him okay god forbid your family business folds right what skills do you have like are you going to be able to go out there and find a job or am i going to be the only person working and have to take care of you 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 have to think about it you have to look at it from his perspective because now he's questioning who are you and why why are you you know a grown woman who doesn't work you you know you're 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 this wild child you're this free spirit but it's like it just to me i have questions and i'm sure jamie has questions now at the same time once again like i said jamie he is tit for tat he goes in for the kill he he's disrespectful he's disrespectful he doesn't think before he speaks he's he, he doesn't care how it affects her he goes and once you piss him off 
all everything else goes out the window he is his main goal at that point is to hurt you is to hurt your feelings to make you feel bad like and that's not good that's never good ever you know and to me that's emotional abuse he's emotionally abusive now she was wrong in my opinion for bringing up his parents divorce knowing because he made it perfectly clear during that argument he said you know how i feel about that i have told you i don't like talking about that and how it makes me feel so she was well aware you guys so she knew what she was doing she intentionally pushed those buttons okay she did and she has to know because i know i feel like i know just the little bit that we watch how jamie is so why would you even you know provoke him like that but anyway so they're arguing going back and forth and lord she drops the bomb like she <laughs> she goes in all right and she is just like you're boring you know you don't initiate anything this is the first time you've ever bought me flowers you don't rub my back you don't initiate you're boring and you like to have basic caucasian sex y'all my mouth flew open and i think it stayed open for the remainder of that conversation or that scene until he walked out i was like no she didn't go there and we all know men when you used to get to talking about sex and or, or they manhood or honey you can say anything else but when you bring up how a man performs in bed honey you yeah you about to start a war all right you <laughs> You have now just gone to a whole nother level, sister. And he he felt it. He felt it. And so, yeah. But she had a point. It's like, it's always something. You're always complaining. You're always coming at me with something. Now, like I said, she was wrong with what she did. But she was absolutely right with how Jamie is with her and this is what i've been saying the whole time he he doesn't know how to diffuse things he doesn't listen to her he doesn't hear her out he is so always on the defense and always ready to one up her in arguments it's like i'ma hurt you before you hurt me oh you got something to say watch this and he just goes in for the kill so ah. Uh, needless to say i don't think they had sex that night <laughs> because yeah yeah I, I i don't think you know sex is gonna uh fix that situation i don't know how they're gonna fix that but let's move on to um amber and matt okay so let's start with the drive to her family's house all right now i think it's pretty safe to say that we all can agree that matt is full of bs all right matt is full of bs we all know why he's there and it is not for amber and is not to be married all right so we, we've already established that um i think i think matt i think like i said in my last review I think he goes back and forth with feeling ah i don't know if i say bad for being on this show knowing that is knowing that he's not there for the right reasons um i think sometimes i think sometimes when he's with amber she she annoys him like he he doesn't i know that he doesn't want her okay even though he's having sex with her he doesn't want her but and so i think he feels sorry or he feels a little bad I'm, I'm i know you guys i'm i'm giving him the benefit of the doubt i think maybe teeny tiny bit it, it may make him feel bad like dang you know i'm playing this girl she's really into me but then at another token i think he gets irritated with her and then he's not even thinking or worried about you know her feelings or 
the fact that he's he's there for the wrong reasons. But this ride to the parents' house when she asked him about kids. Okay, when this dude said he went from five, seven to eight years, she, oh my gosh, the look on her face, the look on her face, just, she was deflated after that. Like, you can tell for the remainder of that episode, or well, the scene with at her family's house, she was deflated. She couldn't even fake it. You know how like you get like I said, you get in your little argument, then you show up and you know, you put on this smile and your everything's okay. She couldn't even do it. She tried, but it was all over her face. So I think Amber knows. Okay. I think she knows or should I say, I think Amber knew prior to that conversation that Matt isn't really into her. And I think she feels like if she gives him sex consistently and takes care of him, that will make him stay. Because it's almost like, okay, well, he doesn't have anywhere to go. You know what I mean? It's like he don't have nothing, he don't have nothing else to do or nowhere else to go. So I know I got him. Even though she know deep down he doesn't want her. Okay, so I think the writing is on the wall. She's aware, but maybe after they have sex or maybe, you know, when he's pleasant towards her and they have a good time, um, I think that kind of gives her false hope. Like, oh, okay, you know, he's been sweet. He's been nice. Oh, maybe there is a chance. Maybe he is falling for me. So when he comes with this five, seven, eight year plan, you know, I don't want kids until another eight years. It was like a punch to the gut. And I think at that moment, it all just came full circle to her. Like, this dude really is not into me. Then he makes the comment of um and I'm, I'm going by memory you guys when he says well it's not that i don't want kids or i have a problem with kids it's the whole being tied to someone for the rest of my life or the rest of the kid's life and i mean really matt um, that's what marriage is. Or that's what marriage is supposed to be. You're supposed to be spending the rest of your life with this person. And so when Amber said that during her, um, face to face time or, or I don't know, what do they call it guys? It, is it confessional or talking head time where it's just them talking to the camera? Um, please leave that in the comment below. Cause I don't know what to call it, but so when Amber's just by herself talking to the camera and when she's like, uh, what is he talking about? Like, that's what marriage is about. It's like now, I think in the beginning, Matt was very conscious of what he said. You know what I mean? Like, cause he had to convince her, convince the show that, and the viewers that, you know, he was really into her. So he was very particular and very careful about what he said. And I think now he is just over it. And so he is not even, he's not even trying like to hide it. Um, you know, the whole eight years. And then he's like, he doesn't want to be tied to someone for the rest of his life. And what? So, you know, that's what I mean by, it's like, you're, you're saying this to your wife. Like that's crazy talk. And when she's like, what what do you what do you mean what are you talking about he starts getting agitated and i think it's because he realized oh shoot you know i done said this and she's catching on and whatever so they get to her family's house and she's like she is she is just gone like for real she shows up she couldn't even and we all know Amber, Amber's a crybaby, you know, and you could tell she wanted to just bust. And everyone's outside and she's like faking it the best way she could until she's like, oh, I have to go run to the bathroom. I have to go pee. 
because she couldn't she couldn't hold it in anymore it's like all this time you know she's bragging about oh her husband is so hot and you know she's so smitten by him and she she you know she's falling for him and he's so hot and he's so handsome and this and that and then you get this 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 punch in the gut right before you show up it's like you can't fake it you can't fake that because at that moment i think she realized this dude doesn't want me he doesn't want me even with everything that i presented to him he does not want me and if he stays with me it's only going to be because i'm taking care of him and he doesn't have anywhere else to go okay so she comes out she's um sitting outside with her sister her twin sister which is freaky to me i, I guys i have this thing about identical twins it's just it creeps me out but anyway so she's out there talking to her sister and she is just sad like she's just sad the whole time and her sister's trying to talk and get things out of her and so then amber tells her sister about the conversation um and then when they then when they're inside and they're having dinner you know matt is just going along with the script okay he's like all right you know we're here with the family so we're gonna fake it and amber is just it's just killing her on the inside like she's trying to put a smile on but yeah it was it was it was it was hard to watch it really was because um like i said i like amber i i just feel like it's just a it's just a bad situation for her it's a really bad situation and to watch it unfold man it is it was kind of difficult to watch um yeah but she was just she was she was just gone then we see they're at home and he ups and leave so okay now she's in panic mode she's pacing and going back and forth and you know trying to do exercise i guess get her mind off of it and then she finally calls i think it was her dad and she is just breaking down because once again i feel like it was all it was all piling up okay so starting from the honeymoon when he told her hey you know i may have an opportunity to go overseas and play you know which means we may not be together between seven ten months at a time even though we just got married so you have that from that point she was on guard i think like that spark that was the first red flag i believe for her now we've all seen the red flags but for her because at that moment her whole demeanor changed her whole demeanor changed it was like that whole abandonment issue kicked in because at that point every little thing he said every little thing he did in her mind it was he's trying to leave me because it went from that to the bathroom situation where okay i want to use the bathroom downstairs and you guys saw her reaction she she just it was like she was just spazzing out you know well why you don't want to share a bathroom with me it's like you want to be away from me it's like girl he just want a different bathroom he just want to he just want to have he just want to do number two in a different bathroom okay but then you go from that to we're in the car and you're telling me you don't want kids for another eight years so it's just all of these things adding up so when they're at home and he ends up leaving that breakdown that we saw with the whole well that we heard rather with the whole boohooing and crying and she's calling her dad that was a collective just of everything from that honeymoon when he was talking about playing overseas possibly playing overseas to the conversation in the car to the bathroom conversation having a separate bathroom all of that 
I think just came over her. I really do. I think all of that just came over her and she couldn't hold it in anymore. Because the fact that she called her dad, that to me just let me know she, it was too much. It was too much. At that point, this dude, you walked out and left? And I don't think it was a, a sense of her being worried like, oh my God, did something happen to him? No, she was worried that he left her. Because think about it now, we're talking about somebody that has abandonment issues. So her worst fear is now playing out in her head at that moment. You know, because to me, I think if you notice with the conversations, is it's coming off like, oh my God, I think he's trying to leave me. Because you could just tell by the things she was saying, her actions. So when he leaves and doesn't come home, oh my God, my worst fear has possibly come true this man has left me because think about it guys where else did he go where where are you going where have you been where are you right now so it was too much it was too much and she because up until this point you know everybody's thinking that everything is okay until her conversation with her sister but even then she wasn't revealing a lot you know, she did say, well, you know, maybe it wasn't, maybe it's not meant to be. Maybe he should have had someone younger or whatever. She wasn't giving her like her true, true feelings. But when she realized he wasn't home and it was what, two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Amber lost it. She lost it. Um, so <laughs> it, it, it was sad to watch because she was just boo hooing she was boohooing and, and and to me you should not be in that stage of stress and distraughtment is distraughtment a word i don't know it sounds good <laughs> you should not be in that stage of panic and stress and come on that early in a relationship we're not even talking about marriage i'm talking about just you meeting someone y'all getting to know each other you should not be at that phase you should not guys i've been married for 16 years my husband and i've been together for 19 i have to this day have not been in that state of stress panic being distraught and i mean come on like you're 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 already experiencing these things with with somebody you just met. That is that's that's craziness. That's craziness. So it's going to be next episode is going to be like oh my gosh. It's 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 going to be good because I don't know if next episode is going to be where it is revealed to her about um Matt being at the club with someone. I don't know. But uh, I just fell for her. I fell for her. Um, but yeah, guys, that's that's it. That is my review. I actually thought this was going to be a short review. Um, yeah, but I think this is longer than all the rest. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my commentary on this show please subscribe if you haven't leave me a comment below let's talk let's discuss this show i'm really interested in knowing what you guys think about this episode just let me know what you guys think thank you so much again for watching listening and until next time take care